All right, ladies and gentlemen, on this video, the Rocker Arm Part 2, we're going to be dimensioning and also understanding how to answer questions 5 and 6 on the quiz. So to begin, I'm going to go to Dimension. Make sure I'm in my Dimension Layer property. I'm going to select line, uh, Linear. Now, I'm going to go to the center point right here. The center point. I'm going to drag this out. I'm going to go to Linear again. Click the center point. And the center point in the polygon. Drag it out. So if you remember, uh, when we were drawing this, we were drawing this with points of coordinates uh, to basically get this circle right here. So it was 70 meters, millimeters to the right, positive 70, and then 40 millimeters up in the y direction, positive 40. Now, we're gonna do the same with the circle. We got this point right here. Sorry, it's not correct. Should it be 70? One second. Let me see where I want to put this. Uh, I will leave it around here. Also, linear. And we have to go out to the left, that's going to be about 60, okay? So, we have the linear uh, layer properties. Let me bring my drawing closer. All right, that's about as good as it's going to get. Now, we're going to switch over to radius. We have to find out the radiuses of the arcs. I'm going to turn off my snap mode. I don't like personally like to use snap modes, but it is what it is. So let's get to it. I'm going to drag this out here and do radius again. Now, just to let you all know, it doesn't look proper at this moment because we have to change some settings. But once we change those settings, you'll see uh, it coming together. You have these lines that extend to the center of the point that we want. I'm not really a big fan of that. I'll show you guys how to take care of it. Hmm. Okay. There we go. Am I missing anything? 50, 25, 40, 50, 25. I am missing. We have to measure the polygons and the circle. So I'm gonna do diameter of the circle. I'm gonna do that as 20 right there. Uh, I'm going to go back to align and make sure I get the hexagon right here. So I'm going to bring that out. That's 60. Um, I'm going to bring out the square. It's basically 20. I don't have to measure all four sides of the square. It's common sense. A square is this, a shape with all four equal sides. Common sense again. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off my object layer property, okay? Now, I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to select all my dimensions. I'm going to right-click Dimension Style. I'm going to say Annotative. If you don't see Annotative here, click Other. Click Annotative. Click OK. So, that's how it comes out. I'm going to turn my object layer property back on. Um, let me check my dimensions for my drawing uh, for my dimension layer property. So I'm going to go dim style, annotative, modify. So I decided to put the arrow size at 4.5. My text at 4.5. My primary units are at zero. I'm going to click OK then close. Now, I don't like how this is right here between the lines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on it and I'm going to drag it in just a little bit right there. I think that looks a little more neater to me in my opinion. I could be wrong, but uh, I'm also going to drag this one in a little bit. 
I don't like them too far out. I'm going to drag this one in as well. Okay, 50. It just looks tacky to me. I don't know. It's just my me nitpicking it. All right. So that looks about right right there. Um, yeah, that looks pretty good. So basically, we want to check the angles. If we look at the quiz, let's take a look here. Classwork. Let's take a look at the quiz, right? So it's telling us to find the dimension of, or I'm sorry, the length and angle. Dimensions are in inches. So you won't necessarily be able to do it here. Um, this one is going to be in inches as well, but you will have a general concept of how to do it. You can open up your inch master file. I'm sorry, your imperial master file, which is going to be in inches and draw this, these designs out, uh, draw this design out as well and be able to do it. Now you can use what's called the quick calc to measure distance and angles, or if you want, you can draw it and then dimension it as well. I prefer you guys to look at the quick calc just to make sure. So when using the quick calc calculator to measure distance and angles, you have to basically right click inside the drawing area. Now, once you do that, you're gonna select quick calc. So this is gonna come up, right? So just want you guys to note that, you know, with quick calc, the option brings up the AutoCAD calculator. This is going to be used to perform a full range of mathematical, scientific, and geometric calculations. We can also use quick calc to create and use variables as well as to convert units of measure. Uh, we're not really converting units of measure real any time soon, maybe not <laughs> at all, but that's cool. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to uh, click measure distance. This is going to be a measured distance right here, distance between two points. So I click that. I'm going to make sure, let me move this out the way. I'm going to make sure my snap to end point is turned on. Try to hover over it. Snap to end point, right? Now, I'm going to turn off my dimensional layer property. I'm going to go to object. And basically, I want to find the endpoint from where that tangent line started, right? So I'm going to click this endpoint. This is the top tangent line. I'm going to click snap to endpoint again. It's going to be here. And we basically get 76. Point six four eight five four eight six. I genuinely do not want you guys to put all that on the quiz. I won't take points off. Uh, I would probably prefer three decimal points. So at round up or down, seventy six point six four eight. Now the five is the next digit, so I'm gonna go up. 76.649, and that's going to be millimeters, okay? Now, we're going to click the clear. So, what you're going to do is we're going to measure the angle, right? So, to measure the angle, we click angle of line defined by two points. Now, when doing this, note that this option allows us to measure the angle between the horizontal axis and a line performed by the two selected points. A positive angle indicates a counterclockwise direction. Again, a positive angle indicates a counterclockwise direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select endpoint again. And I'm going to select the tangent line that we worked with before. And then I'm going to click select endpoint or snap to endpoint one more time. And I'm going to select right here. Now, <laughs> I'm 
the angle is basically going to be 11.6804176. Okay. Now, let's make sure we're using this to create our drawing. I'm sorry, to answer questions five and six. Um, and I think you guys should be good from there, all right? I will see you guys next video. Take care.